Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at syncing video and audio um, using a clapperboard system uh, which you would have implemented on the set. Uh, in order to make the syncing of sound and video in post much easier when you're recording with an external audio source. So let's just jump straight in and uh, take a look at what I'm actually talking about here. So we can see in this little sequence from my upcoming short film, The Karate Kid Complex, we've got some very horrendous um, sound straight off of the uh, camera, which was the 550D. And you can see he says, Nigel Weigel. Um, but the actual whole line is, well, if it isn't Mr. Nigel Weigel. However, we only cut this shot as he says Nigel Weigel. So what we want to do is find the audio clip that matches this clip. So the audio files were given um, from the sound recordist in a large folder. Now really what you want to do is go through and identify which of these sounds matches which day. Um, however, I took the initiative in this project because the project wasn't quite as long. Um, to just leave them in their folders based on their dates and then I knew that it would be just as easy to find it because of that. So what we're going to do is uh, click on the clip that we want to sync and press shift F and what that's going to do is it's going to find the clip for us in the event library. So you can see we've got the clip and it shows us the in and out point and then if we scrub to earlier in the clip we can see that the clapperboard comes up into shot very vaguely um, and very briefly but Generally speaking, the clapperboard would take up the whole clip. In this case, we can just see that it says 1347. So, and we can also see that it's uh, slate 18, sh um, take one, I believe. So, this, in most cases, isn't much to go on, but we can see the time stamp, which is what we're really after. And then what we can do is go to shoot day one, because that's when it was shot, and look for the uh, 1347. If we scroll over uh, to the right, you can see we've got some different columns, and one of them is the content created statistic, or data, or metadata. And if we scroll down to roughly around 1347, you can see these are going up. This is the time of day, obviously. And you can see there's a 1346 and a 1348. Now, it's not going to have started recording after the clapperboard, so it's going to be the 1346. And you can see there's three files because there were three audio channels. There was a stereo microphone as well as a dialogue microphone, which recorded in mono. So, if we now play this back. Slate 17, roll 1, scene 2C, take 1. You can see he's a slate 17, which isn't what we're after. And that doesn't sound like the exact delivery, so let's then go for the next clip. Okay, uh, turn over. over. Sound rolling! Camera rolling. Make sure the focus is... Uh, slate 18, roll 1, scene 2C, take 2. Okay. We've also got the clapper. Which we can also use to align the clip, but we're going to go and try and align it based on the dialogue. Now let's listen to the dialogue. Is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? That sounds far more like the clip that we're looking for. So if we um, line our playhead up and just press um, in well, if it's Mr. Nigel Wigel. and out, we know that that's roughly the clip. However, we're dealing with a slightly bigger, not problem, but just a slight complication, and that is there are three audio streams. So the first thing that we actually want to do is select all three audio streams, Right click and press synchronize click. Then, if we go back to our Ali Complex um, top level folder and scroll to the top, you can see we've now got this synchronized clip which we can rename and call Nigel Wigel Sync Sound. Now we can actually go and um, also sync this with the video. However, the video is already in the timeline and we it wasn't done beforehand, so I see no reason why we can't just go and align it manually. Well, Mr. Nigel Wigel. 
So I pressed I to set the in point and O to set the out point, and now we've got this little dialog clip. And if we just go in here and drag this into the timeline, we can have a go at aligning it. So this is the point where he says, Nigel, Nigel, Wigel. So let's put our playhead there. We make sure we get the sound. We've got the sound clip collect, uh, selected, and we're going to press M to set a marker. And what we then want to do is grab this clip, so the marker aligns with the endpoint of this clip. And you can hear they line up pretty well. What um, I am noticing is that the uh, the actual recorded sound comes in slightly. A fraction of a second later, so we shuffle this over. You can see that's a much better sync. So, if we now dip the audio from here and from here, so that we've just got the recorded sound, we can see we've now got perfectly synced sound, and the sound is sounding pretty good. There's an awful lot of sounds in there. So, if we just double click on the uh, sync sound uh, compound clip, you can see we've now got all the different audio channels. And what we want to do is make sure that they're correctly outputted. And what I mean by this is if we click on the first clip, this is, I know, um, based on what the sound recorders has told me, that this is the left channel. So if we make sure we have the inspector showing and we're on the audio tab, and on the channels we can change that to left, we can select the next clip and change that to right, and then we can select the bottom clip, and we can just leave that as, as mono. Well, visit Mr. Nigel White. I'm also noticing that this is sounding a little bit tinny, so what I'm going to do is go into the audio enhancements. Now you can uh, watch my tutorial for the custom equalization. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. But what we're just going to do uh, for uh, time-saving purposes is just use bass boost on both tracks. Well, is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? Well, is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? And now that's sounding pretty good. In fact, what we can even do is disable the last layer because the uh, the dialogue microphone was actually focused on the protagonist the whole time, and this is the line from the antagonist. So, well, is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? So, just these two uh, tracks alone is going to give us the best uh, audio. And then we click this arrow here and we can go back to our project. Now, one other th quick thing in terms of organization is that now that we've synced this sound, what we really want to do is put that back into the uh, shoot day one sound um, keyword collection so that we can find it there rather than have to navigate to this uh, master folder. Then what we want to do is um, if we just fade in the... Uh, the in and out points. Well, visit Mr. Nigel Wigel. There we go, we've got some nice quality sound and it's all sounding pretty good. The other thing we might want to do is something that we can actually do with the compound clip rather than going individually. And that is to go into the audio enhancements and we can actually reduce the background noise um, from the compound clip as opposed to doing it individually. Well, visit Mr. Nigel Wigel. One of the most important things you have to watch out for with the background noise is when it starts getting rid of some of the dialogue and then you end up with something really robotic like this. Well, is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? That actually sounds horrendous. So always try and keep it below 20%, I would. Well, is it Mr. Nigel Wigel? Let's go for 10. You can also adjust this, the uh, loudness uniformity. I've got another tutorial. Well, is it Mr. But one thing you've got to be careful of is so you can see that this is the noise footprint. We don't want to um, bring up the noise too much. There we go. The sound is sounding great. So what we can then do is take a look at the next clip. You're all losers. You're all losers. Uh, this is Nigel's defiant stand against his bullies after having taken some karate lessons. So what we're going to do is uh, you can see the shortcut here, uh, which we used earlier, which is reveal in event browser. And now if we scrub along to earlier in the clip, you can see the clapperboard's much more clear now. So it's slate 31. Uh, sh um, sh 
roll one. You can see what I mean. Um, shot two F, take six. And the but the what we were actually looking for is the timestamp. So sixteen twenty three is the roundabout point. So let's go back into our sound one. So let's look for sixteen twenty three. You can see this is it here. There's a spike here, which could be his voice. Actually, it's a motorcycle. If we go down here and turn on sound skimming, then that's going to let us skim over these. There you go, there is the line right there. Um, so then what we want to do is grab the other three clips, like we did before. We're going to synchronize clips. We don't know if we want to use the latter half of the um, audio yet, so what we're going to do for the time being is just uh, call it the uh, You're All Losers line. So we scroll to the top of the uh, master folder. You can see here's our other one. And then let's grab this bit. You're all losers. That is the dialogue line. You're all losers. And let's bring it out to here. And you can actually see we can try and align them based on the uh, waveforms which we can see. You're all losers. And that's that's sounding pretty good already. I mean, that was just aligned visually without even listening. You're all losers. We might do is bring it a little bit closer. You're all losers. Uh, it's getting a little bit out of sync. You're all losers. Now that's looking pretty good. So what we want to do is, is add the fade-ins. And now let's double click on it to go into the clip. You can see that the third track, like I was saying earlier, is the protagonist track, uh, predominantly. So what we can actually do, if if we press V to turn to disable these tracks, You're all losers. that is the best sound because there's minimal background noise. You're all losers. And it's just very crystal clear voice from the protagonist. Let's uh, try and get rid of a little bit of background noise. We can increase the loudness a little bit, try to decrease the uniformity a bit. Now let's add a bass boost. You're all losers. Uh, bass boost is too intense for me, but I'm going to um, bring down this a little bit. We go into flat and go into the custom equalizer and just boost the bass a little bit. You're and that's sounding pretty good. So that's my phone telling me to wake up. I guess I'm already awake. You're losers. Magical. So now we've got these two audio clips. If we just play this section back. Well, if it's a Mr. Nigel Wigel. You can hear that the actual background sound on that is a bit intense, so we're going to actually decrease the volume of that track. Well, if it's a Mr. Nigel Wigel. I'm going to discuss in a second how to get rid of this background noise in a second tutorial. You're all losers. And there you go, we've now, using a clapperboard system, synced our sound with our video very efficiently, um, having already made an initial edit of a sequence. So, if you click on the link in the description for the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at filling out this sound design. How do we make this sound like one scene? Because obviously these audio takes are all coming from different takes um, of audio and video. But we want to make it sound and look like one uh, unified scene. So go ahead, click on the next tutorial. Um, FYI, uh, this is the Karate Kid Complex, which will be out on the 12th of July uh, on the Virgin Media Shorts website. So we want to try and get the uh, People's Choice Award um, if we don't, don't get selected. So the way you can help out is very simply by clicking on the link, which will I'll upload a video with a link uh, on the day, and you can then share that video. All you have to do is click the share button on the video on the Virgin Media Shorts page, um, and that helps us get the uh, People's Choice Award. So I'd really appreciate your help uh, with that. So thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next tutorial.